Good evening and welcome to today's special STEM making art. We are delighted to host this webinar with the one and only Mr. Runal Shah. Runal has more than 14 years of experience in the language translation industry. In 2018, he laid the foundation brick for Sunday Bricks. At Sunday Bricks, he and his team designs Lego workshops for children and parents. Runal is a Lead Six Bricks facilitator, a teacher training program which is supported by the foundation. He has trained 350 plus teachers in India on this program. Before we commence, let's establish some guidelines for today's events. We will ensure that everyone is on mute except for our speaker to maintain an uninterrupted session. As the session unfolds, the chat box will be activated. We encourage your active engagement by posing questions and contributing to the conversation. At the conclusion of the session, you will receive a feedback form link. To receive the session certificate, we kindly request you to complete the survey. Additionally, please have your printouts ready for a hands-on learning experience. If you haven't printed them yet, don't worry. I'm sharing the link in the chat box again for the documents you need the printouts of. Now, it is my privilege to hand over the session to Mr. Mrunal Shah. So Mrunal, how does it feel to be back? Absolutely good. And it's, it's always great to design another Mekinar uh, for all the teachers uh, and all the educational, uh, you know, I mean, members of the fraternity, uh, you know, kind of associated with the SAR education. So absolutely happy. And I love it because teachers are always engaged in this session. Um, but before we really begin, like uh, Prashansa did mention about the printouts. Yes, she has shared the link on the, in the chat box as well. But let me just show you what are these printouts, okay? So there's one sheet that looks like this. Um, there's another one that looks like this. Okay. And there's a third one that looks like this. Well, um, if you've kind of registered uh, pretty much in advance, you would have also seen that uh, you need some other uh, material um, along with uh, the printouts. I'm just going to quickly show that to you. But... If you like registered at a very last minute, don't stress about it because it's also important that you see how the activities are done because the printouts are already sent to you or you can also download it now. So if you don't have the material, don't panic, but just enjoy uh, on how it has to be done so that you can really go back to your school and really do these activities with your uh, children, right? So we're also looking at a paper cup. Um, we're looking at two straws. Could be a paper straw or a plastic straw, whatever is readily available with you. And also a peg, right? So the clip that we use uh, for our clothes. Um, and any sticking material, it could be a tape or it could be some glue. And of course, a scissor because without that, you will not be able to take care of your cello tape, right? So um, there's going to be also a requirement of dice. But don't worry if you don't have it, you know, because there's always an off, uh, there's always like an online dice that you can worry about. Or I have a dice and I'll tell you what numbers are being uh, thrown on my dice. So don't really worry about it. But if you have at least a pencil and these printouts and a scissor to start with, I think it's just going to be great, uh, you know, like an experience for you to, you know, kind of build uh, and kind of understand what children will really go through. So remember, I don't like uh, a session where teachers are just listening to me because like children, like, I mean, like every child, uh, or rather, I would say in every individual, we really want to do things. We want to move. We want to like type. We want to do something. So while, of course, others are going to join in a bit, um, I really want to know which city are you coming from? That is always my question. I really want to know where are you all from, right? I mean, India is so big, so great. Uh, so use the chat box and type in where are you coming from, right? So that's very, very important. Um, lovely. So we'll just wait for you to type in. That's very, very important. And while you do that, um, the, the, the next thing that's going to be is that, did you attend the previous making hours, right? Because today's making hour is again at on, you know, for, uh, like, uh, by a special request from all of you who attended last time. Right. So you all said that we were, we want something for our uh, kindergartners or, you know, the preschool children or, uh, for grade one and grade two children. So 
that is why exactly this makina has been designed for junior kg senior kg grade 1 and grade 2 that's that's where really the focus is so did you attend the last one that's the second question you're going to put yes or a no right so lovely to know you have i mean um, you know kind of interact with you all that's very very important for me okay good yes no yes no coming in cities are still coming in lovely so that that's important again if you haven't attended all the recordings are pretty much there on youtube of sar education so please go back and look at the previous recordings there are lots and lots of activities for you all to do and each month we come up with a specific agenda with a specific theme that you can readily use in your classroom good so while you type in all of that um let me tell you 21st of march is world forest day which means that's the day when we kind of uh remember our forest okay at least tell children that this is one day where we got to really worry about the the green planet that we live in and without trees without forest we really can't can live here right so without water without trees without forest we really can't really do it so there's something called as a concept across the world called as a green school right where children are taught about how important trees plants or vegetation or the entire biodiversity around it is right there are animals as a part of it we are dependent on plants plants are dependent on animals and like a, like a great uh, cycle around it right so those schools that would really implement a lot of projects around um, um you know this topic you know they're kind of titled as green school and even government of india has some guidelines on what should a green school really be uh, doing so do look online uh, about it as well so are you ready to start i hope i was just talking so that if you if you had to pick up a print out or something you could have done that but i'm really really uh, ready now to get this started and like always we're going to start with a story so sit back sip some chai or whatever that you've got to do relax and listen to this story right so prashant sir if we can have the presentation um but i had to talk a bit about steam and stem i think um, in in this little bit of talking that i was doing i forgot about that i'm going to quickly go through that as well so uh i'm sorry i i fo i forgot the protocol right so hold on yeah so again just a quick uh quick brief about what is steam and stem again this is basically a methodology um you know where we kind of um combining a lot of subjects together to ensure that specific skills are kind of imparted into children because those skills are going to really help them in the coming days in the coming months in the coming years uh, something in short we call as the 21st century skill so just to read it out for you it's basically an approach it's a methodology it's not a subject which actually uses science technology engineering arts and mathematics um, you know basically as a access or a guiding point to take children towards a journey where they're inquiring where they're questioning where they're talking where they're collaborating where they're integra i mean where they are um, you know thinking um, you know with with friends with peers and all of that um, and in all of this they're learning you know kind of to solve problems uh, you know to come up with solutions uh, you know kind of use a lot of cognitive flexibility which is like you know getting your mind thinking so um this is you know across the world steam stem is really really picking up only for a reason because um the future jobs really demand these specific skills in fact in my next one that we do for april i'm going to really talk about what skills do we need for 2024 because or uh, 2027 right so world economic uh, report has already come up with what skills do children or people who will be you know applying for jobs in 2027 need to have so we have good 3 to 4 years to really prepare our children for that of course i'm talking about the older kids right um but why not even with the younger kids prashansa next slide please lovely uh, a quick slide of why we should really start with stem early or steam early because i am right now focusing on teachers or educators who are from uh, you know kindergarten until grade 1 grade 2 so trust me to get that sense of curiosity to get that sense of wonder around how this world really is you know stem or steam is really what can really get that into your children right and we want our children to ask these questions 
why is this happening you know why is the um, you know i mean why do the plants need sunlight right or why do we not have forest everywhere on this planet earth why do we also have a desert somewhere right so uh, figuring out things understanding things you know using tools or using uh, machines or rather i would say manipulatives to kind of understand things like as simple as that you know like when they go to a beach and they use those little digging tools that itself is a tool to understand that this is what i really need when i work with sand or later on that's going to be to understand what happens when i'm doing excavation right or imagining pretending what if i was in this position or what if i was this you know like those role play things really really something that steam or stem can get you into but of course makering tinkering you know like what you call like hands on experience or hands on activities is something that's very very important because not everything can be learned through books or just by seeing things right i mean you can't have that one way communication where you're just a receiver of information right you need to process it and also kind of um, give your inputs on the way you really see world and that is what steam or stem activities really allow you right let's go to the next one yeah um just a quickly i'm going to really get through this um when children are really younger children are engaged um you know in activities which are around stem uh, we kind of getting some kind of habits into them right so like i just mentioned the next session i will talk about the skills that we need for 2027 as per world economic report um when children do these stem or steam activities they're forming some habits like inquiry observation okay let me look through this okay let me look here let me look here you know what other kind of results or describers people who really know how to talk about it talk about a situation you know kind of uh, people to experiment or children are getting into that habit of experimenting let me put this or let me put that let me put little more vinegar and really what happens in experience uh, with that experience or you know that engineering mindset of how is this really working how is this built why are you know um, why is that my car battery operated car why did it really stop working can i like a simple thing that children would do is just bang the car on the table and see that oh does that start working but they don't understand that you know probably that loose connect with the battery is probably helping them or they learn things like measuring uh, everything that they see they start measuring you know when you kind of get that measuring tape or something or some tools to help them measure in their hand it just gets very very exciting or they can start even predicting things so these are stem habits which are again very very useful uh, for the careers that are expected in the uh, coming years or the future years for these little children right so um while these activities develop skills they also help you develop some habits which are something very very important for you to note and also to remember right great so um not waiting uh, further and let's get started with our story and for all those who've just joined in good evening Uh, we've done a little bit of uh, understanding on what is stem and steam but now we're getting on to the story we're really getting into our topic uh, which is about forest so let's start with the story and then we'll get on to all our activities you still have the time to print some sheets because the story is going to be like 6 minutes long prashant sir if you want to just add the link once again that would be really helpful uh, but if you are busy playing the story then i can help you uh, paste the link so for all those who just, just joined in the link again in the chat box yeah so please please make make sure that you download them even if you can't print them look on your machine how do these really look like so you can really easily relate to it right so let's get started with this beautiful story about rainforest um and i'll i'll just give you a thumbs up prashant sir when i hear the sound rainforest grew all around this is the title author and illustrator the rainforest grew all around on the ground there fell a seed the fluffiest seed that you ever did see uh prashanta what do you want to just seed pause for a second in the ground and the rain well remember that every story that you hear in my session you also start making some notes remember that okay because there are going to be some questions around it so why you enjoy why you relax you also have to note down things because there are a lot of things around it okay so 
Now I'm not going to really interrupt you, but because I saw that there were a lot of newcomers for the session, I thought I'm just going to really talk about it, right? So write down key things, okay? Um, and if we can just play this story Move again. All around. On the ground there fell a seed, the fluffiest seed that you ever did see. The seed in the ground and the rainforest grew all around, all around. The rainforest grew all around. And from the seed, there grew a tree, the tallest tree that you ever did see. The tree from the seed and the seed in the ground and the rainforest grew all around, all around. The rainforest grew all around. And in the tree, there lay a cat, the spottiest cat that you ever did see. The cat in the tree and the tree from the seed and the seed in the ground and the rainforest grew all around, all around. The rainforest grew all around. And near the cat, there was a vine, the curliest vine that you ever did see. The vine near the cat and the cat in the tree and the tree from the seed and the seed in the ground and the rainforest grew all around, all around. The rainforest grew all around. And by the vine, there was a snake, the greenest snake that you ever did see. The snake by the vine and the vine near the cat and the cat in the tree and the tree from the seed and the seed in the ground and the rainforest grew all around, all around. The rainforest grew all around. And by the snake, there crawled an ant, the busiest ant that you ever did see. The ant by the snake, and the snake by the vine, and the vine near the cat, and the cat in the tree, and the tree from the seed, and the seed in the ground, and the rainforest grew all around, all around. The rainforest grew all around. And near the ant, there was a sloth, the slowest sloth that you ever did see. The sloth near the ant, and the ant by the snake, and the snake by the vine, and the vine near the cat, and the cat in the tree, and the tree from the seed, and the seed in the ground, and the rainforest grew all around, all around. The rainforest grew all around. And by the sloth, there was a plant, the prettiest plant that you ever did see. The plant by the sloth, and the sloth near the ant, and the ant by the snake, and the snake by the vine, and the vine near the cat, and the cat in the tree, and the tree from the seed, and the seed in the ground, and the rainforest grew all around, all around. The rainforest grew all around. And in the plant, there was a frog, the brightest frog that you ever did see. The frog in the plant, and the plant by the sloth, and the sloth near the ant, and the ant by the snake, and the snake by the vine, and the vine near the cat, and the cat in the tree, and the tree from the seed, and the seed in the ground, and the rainforest grew all around, all around. The rainforest grew all around. And by the frog, there sat a bird, the funniest bird that you ever did see. The bird by the frog, and the frog in the plant, and the plant by the sloth, and the sloth near the ant, and the ant by the snake, and the snake by the vine, and the vine near the cat, and the cat in the tree, and the tree from the seed, and the seed in the ground, and the rainforest grew all around, all around. The rainforest grew all around. And near the bird, there hung a bat. The sleepiest bat that you ever did see. 
the bat near the bird, and the bird by the frog, and the frog in the plant, and the plant by the sloth, and the sloth near the ant, and the ant by the snake, and the snake by the vine, and the vine near the cat, and the cat in the tree, and the tree from the seed, and the seed in the ground, and the rainforest grew all around, all around. The rainforest grew all around. And by the bat, there was a pod, the highest pod that you ever did see. The pod by the bat, and the bat near the bird, and the bird by the frog, and the frog in the plant, and the plant by the sloth, and the sloth near the ant, and the ant by the snake, and the snake by the vine, and the vine near the cat, and the cat in the tree, and the tree from the seed, and the seed in the ground, and the rainforest grew all around, all around. The rainforest grew all around. And from the seed, there, and from the pod, there blew a seed, the fluffiest seed that you ever did see. The seed from the pod, and the pod by the bat, and the bat near the bird, and the bird by the frog, and the frog in the plant, and the plant by the sloth, and the sloth near the ant, and the ant by the snake, and the snake by the vine, and the vine near the cat, and the cat in the tree, and the tree from the seed, and the seed in the ground, and the rainforest grew all around, all around. The rainforest grew all around. Okay. You know what? This, this little story reminds me of Shankar Madhavan's Breathless song. You know, if you really had to do like the last verse, you know, it's, it's like the whole thing. But it's so beautiful. It starts with a seed and it really ends with a seed and so much, so much, so much of thinking that really goes uh, in this. But so um, there were lots of... Um, animals, birds, creatures, insects, everything that was there that is a part of the rainforest. The whole beautiful idea about this little story is to kind of let children know that what all possibility, what all possibility can you find in a beautiful rainforest, right? I mean, what a beautiful ecology that is kind of created in a typical rainforest, right? So now we've got to definitely design some activities around it, right? We want them to kind of remember this, right? We want them to kind of, uh, uh, you know, kind of let's have a recap of what really, really happened. So, of course, for the older kids, I have things that um, I would definitely ask them. But I'm going to start with the younger kids, right? So, what can we really do for our younger kids? So, uh, this is what the activity is that you can really combine with uh, the children. Prashansa, you had something to talk? Yeah, so before we move on, I just want to request the audience that can we please turn our videos on so that the session becomes more interactive and we'll not judge you if you are in your night suit or anything in your loungewear. We don't judge. We just want that, you know, we get to see the your beautiful faces. So I request, thank you, Priyanka Kara, ma'am and Nidhi Dhir, ma'am. And uh, to everybody else, this is just, uh, you know, a request from the bottom of my heart that let's turn our videos on and make the session successful and interactive. Thank you, Minakshi Aroda, ma'am. Shweta Gupta, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, so don't worry if you don't have the printouts, you know, I mean, you can always just use your hand gestures to talk about things are good, bad, working, not working. So we can really, really do all of that, right? So when I know that... Uh, People are interacting, which just makes a lot of sense for me. So, thank you, Prashansa, for that. Uh, yeah, Brunal, uh, you can see a lot of faces, and we must give them a shout out for, uh, you know, listening to us and actually, uh, you know, coming into the interactive mode. It really adds to the session. So, thank you, Soumya, ma'am, Wani, ma'am, Megha, ma'am, Bhavna, ma'am. Thank you so much. Lovely, lovely, great. So that's uh, what I was really talking about. That's the sheet that is really created for that little story that we have. Um, and how you really have to work is how I'm going to explain you. But if you have it, what I'll really tell you is that you have to cut the tree separately for your class. And then you've got these little, uh, you know, insects or animals or birds or whatever reptiles that you have. Everything is here marked in a circle that you can easily cut out for children. Now, what are we really going to do is 
we are going to use a peg and we are going to stick that little bird or that little reptile or that little animal on uh, that little peg, right? So I've got all my pegs prepared here. I've got a little sloth here. I've got the toucan here or the bird. I've got an ant. I've got the frog. I've got the snake and I also have the bat, right? So I've kind of added the peg at the back of all these little uh, cutouts. And then what am I going to do is I would like to make this in my classroom like a group activity with two or three, three children kind of using this activity. Here is where I have actually cut the tree. It's there in the printout. If you really see, that's how the printout looks like. And that is how the tree really looks like. So that's the tree. And what I'm really, really going to do in my classroom is, um, say, imagine if there are three children on a table or uh, doing this activity. So the teacher really calls out the animal. Okay, so say, let's see, what is this, right? So come on, everybody, you can either turn on your, I mean, I think you can just use the chat box. So what can you really see here? Okay, or rather I would say this. Okay, this is how really... Uh, the bat would be happier rather than this, right? So what can you really see here? So I'm going to ask this in my classroom, okay? So is the bat going to hang like this from a tree or it's going to be hanging upside down? So children are very happy to answer these questions, right? So if that was a tree in the rainforest, where shall we peg the bat? So, you know, there'll be discussion in the classroom. They'll keep talking in it, right? And they'll say, okay, let's put it near a branch here. So what I've done is I have actually pegged my bat here around the tree, right? Now, uh, let's see what we can do another one before I jump on to what are we really learning here as well, okay? So I've got my frog, okay? Does anybody remember in the story how was the frog? Was it the slowest frog? Was it the brightest frog? Or was it the sleepiest frog? Okay. So that's where I get to know whether my children were listening to the story. What were they doing? Allowing them to guess, which is also another skill that you just don't keep your mouth shut. But you also, you know, kind of just try and guess or try and estimate what could be the possible answer. Yes, it was our brightest frog. Okay. So where can the frog be? You think the frog is going to jump all the way up on the tree? No, right? Or is it going to some be here? Will the frog be able to jump here? Right? Well, ideally, a frog's, you know, normally your frogs will not be able to jump much. And it's actually very much at the base of the tree, right? Because where you've got the marshy land, where there's a little bit of a water, where things are not pretty much dry is where you'll really, really see the frog. Okay. And then again, I'm going to talk about the bird. Now, the bird really can fly as high as possible, right? So, allow children to discuss, you know, whether the bird is going to be here, the bird is going to be here, or the bird can really, really fly up. So, I'm going to try and, you know, based on what the inputs come from the classroom is where I'm going to put my uh, bird. Now, how was that bird? Was that a sleepiest bird? Was that the tallest bird? Was that the fluffiest bird? Or what was it? Somebody's typing in, yeah, 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 funniest bird. Exactly. So that was it, right? It was the funniest bird. Again, I want to make sure that children or the learners in my classroom are always active. Um, and that's why they know that the teacher is going to really ask. Maybe in one, one session, you really ask them. They know that next time onwards, the teacher is going to really ask. So let's try and remember as much as we can. Okay, so, or maybe the team that could guess you know, the right adjective for that little uh, bird or whatever that question you had, you know, they were allowed to come in front of the classroom and come and peg the bird, whatever, whatever that you really want to do with this activity. But if you can just tell me, um, I am dealing with junior kg, senior kg children. When I give them a tool which has a peg on it, how are we really helping our children? So let's see if you can type in. I'm not going to give you the direct answer. How do you think is this peg-based activity going to help our children? Yes, so uh, good. So, I mean, do be a bit specific. That'll be great. 
uh, motor scales, if you can be a little more specific about which motor scale, are you talking about the gross motor scale or are you talking about the fine motor scales, please be a little bit. Uh, yes, somebody mentioned the word kinesthetic. Absolutely, it is a kinesthetic activity because you're doing something, right? Kinesthetic is all about doing things, right? So, uh, and that uh, lets me remind you that, remember, in your classroom, there are three types of learners. The one who love to listen, like the story listeners, they love story. They then get into that world of rainforest and all of that. Then you've got people who just love to see and understand things. And there are those who don't understand by listening and seeing, but they understand more when they do hands-on, right? So we're kind of making it visual, we're making it audible, and we're also doing the hands-on activity. So it's also helping all the three types of learners in your classroom, right? So coming back to that question, Yes, we're really helping with the fine motor skill. And then, of course, the different grips, because that's what is helping them to write and, you know, kind of do the executive functions that they have to do in their classroom. So it's a wonderful activity, uh, like a recap of what's really happening. Um, and they get very engaged because it's nice to hold this and plug it onto the tree. Uh, and, you know, probably even for you to understand, are, uh, is it making sense for them? Is that the way they perceive the world, right? I mean, uh, did somebody put the bird at the bottom of the, you know, near the roots? Um, and then if the bird was put at the root, you would want to ask that child, why do you think is the bird down, right? Why is the bird not on top of the tree? Why is the bird at the bottom? So we're doing a lot of inquiry. We're doing a lot of questioning and we want, probably there could be a wonderful answer, right? So the hunter came and the bird was shot and that's why the bird is on the floor. We want those questions to come. We want those uh, nice thinking to happen from children. So that's very, very important, right? Lovely. Now, if I was again dealing with uh, older kids, okay? Now, I'm not sure when would you really want to, uh, you know, kind of teach about uh, the superlative and the comparative adjectives, right? Because here, every little creature that was there in this forest had us had an adjective to it, right? So busiest and slowest sloth, right? So everything was the last degree. So um, fast, faster, fastest, right? Uh, funny, funnier, funniest. So we really had that third degree coming in for the adjective. So there's a nice grammar element to, uh, to this as well. So how you want to kind of put that in your classroom is is uh, I kind of leave it up to you depending upon how what kind of children that you're dealing with, and if you also observed there was always a preposition also. Where is the position of that little creature? By the in the above the below the so all those prepositions were also there. Again, that's not for pre-primary, but for the older kids. Um, and don't think that older kids are not going to like this story. They will definitely like this story as well. But it's just the kind of uh, things that you really frame for them um, around this little story, right? So that's how this beautiful story is. Uh, again, giving you an idea of all the stories that you do in your school classroom. How can you weave uh, some STEM activities around it? So that, that's what is important. How can you make your uh, uh, lesson plans activity-based, engagement-based, that is what children really like. They, they are already doing storytelling and all at home. So make it more interactive and more hands-on for them, right? Okay, good. Uh, let's get on to the presentation and we'll move on to the next one. But if anybody has questions around it, uh, while Prashansa is, uh, you know, getting us on the next presentation, if you all have questions, please put it in the chat box. Um, we'll try to answer it now or later, doesn't matter, but it's a fun activity. Do implement this um, in your classroom, right? But you have questions, please type in. I'll be happy to answer them. And Prashansa, let's move to the next one. Okay, so we've got another, another activity here. Now, this one um, I have actually picked up uh, from the SAR Education STEM books. Um, and I'm just going to quickly show you how this looks like because you need to get like a first-hand idea of what this uh, could look like. So Prashans, I think we'll have to just uh, shut the presentation and I could just quickly show them. So there's a nice, uh, in the grade one book that we have, again, there's a nice uh, topic called as uh, Plants Have Parts. Okay, so that's a grade one book of the SAR education and there are lots and lots of activities. So this one that I have picked up 
uh, is really from uh, that little chapter of grade one uh, STEM series. It's called the Smart Starts uh, STEM series books. Um, and this is very much uh, like a like a, a follow up activity of uh, you know, once you've told children about what are the different parts of a plant, right? So quickly, let's just uh, let's just quickly uh, put in the chat box what are the different parts of a plant. Come on, so let's see what all comes from you. I have to make sure that this uh, session is interactive. I'm not the only one who's talking or doing things. I want you all to also equally participate, right? So flower, stem, bud, roots, lovely. Branches, flowers, flowers, okay. Trunk, fruit, okay, lovely. Somebody's given all the answers as well, so that's good. Makes it easy for me. Nice. Trunk, okay, you start from the roots, then you go to the trunk, then you've got the branches. On the branches, you've got leaves. From the leaves, you'll see the buds, and then some are forming fruits, and then they are forming, uh, they're forming, forming flowers, and then it's forming fruits, right? So that's really it's happening and then also seeds right because from the fruit you're going to have the seeds falling down remember that little rainforest thing that we did um, where you also have the seeds coming in so yes uh, these are all the possible uh, plants uh, uh, parts of a plant right so uh, Prashant and now we can have the presentation so once we've kind of shown children you know probably you've taken them out in your school uh, open space where they've got a tree and you've kind of literally made them touch and feel every part of a plant, right? I mean, they really will understand better when they touch things, when they hug that tree. You know, that reminds me of that little story, the Chipko movement. If you haven't done that, uh, please make a note of it. It's a great story. It's a real, it's a real initiative uh, by some children. I think it was in Rajasthan. I'm not really sure about it, uh, which state where this really happened, but there's a beautiful book, I think, by uh, um, um, Pratham Books, I think so, on the Chipko movement. So uh, a nice, nice uh, activity to do. Okay, Bihar. Okay, thank you for uh, telling me that. Um, a nice activity to combine whenever you're talking about forest or trees in your classroom, right? So, okay, coming back from Bihar or the Chipko movement to our uh, parts of the plant. That's a nice sheet that we have here. And you've got four questions here, like a sample thing. And then, of course, you can recreate in your classroom what you really want to do about it. And like, let's look at the first one. Does this tree have roots, right? Now, I'm really talking about preschoolers here. Don't think that I'm talking about grade three, grade four children. So get your thinking hats. I mean, lower down your thinking hats as well, along with me right now. So let's answer in the chat box, okay? The first one. Does this tree have roots? Okay. And then I'm going to really, really color this, right? So color, whatever is the right answer for this, okay? So yes, of course, it's very easy for us because we're educators and we know a lot of things around it, but very, very simple question. But for children, it's really fun, okay? They'll still look left and right. Oh God, what is my partner answering? They would have not figured out things also, but that's how children are, okay? Very innocent and uh, a beautiful soul. Lovely. Now, second question, okay? Does this tree have a trunk? Okay, so what is a trunk? Okay, and I will go, you can talk whatever that you want. Children can answer this. Um, remember always about those three types of learners, uh, seeing, listening, and kinesthetic ones, right? So kinesthetic ones are actually the ones who are learning when they color and answer that question. Okay, so remember that that is where this is really, really helping them. Okay, okay good. I think, yes, there is a trunk. Okay, now, does this third one, okay, does this tree have a branch? Okay, very tough question. Ooh. But I think it does have a branch. I can see a lot of branches. So there are branches, there's a trunk and from there you can see the branches and then you can see the leaves. So yes, there are branches. If you got confused, then you surely can take this in your classroom. It's really going to work well. Okay? If teachers are confused, it's working great for children as well. Okay? It's making them think. We want them to think. That's what is most important. That is what is really the idea of STEM-based activities. Okay. 
Okay, good. The fourth one, very easy. Okay. Um, does this tree have leaves? Okay. Oh my goodness, it doesn't have leaves. Now, if I had to ask another question followed by this question, okay, something that is connected with seasons or a period of a time when all the leaves fall down, what can I ask, right? So I'm kind of trying to prepare you for if you are to lead this activity in your classroom or if your teachers are to lead this, what would you really ask them after this, right? Remember, we're not sticking to the curriculum always. We are always trying to add one or two sentences or questions additionally around it, right? So what can you really, okay, because that presentation is not there, I'm just going to show my screen here as well. So if I have to ask this question, does this tree have leaves, okay? And the answer is no, right? There are no leaves, right? Absolutely, that's that's correct. But what is like? what is the next question that I would really want to ask children or what do you think is getting into their mind now? There are no leaves. So can you guess which season is going on? Lovely. I, I love that sentence. Okay. I wonder what season is this? I wonder is a great way to form your sentences when you ask questions. It really gets them onto a thinking tangent. Okay. Remember that much. Okay. No, no, no. That's not. Don't answer this question for me. You're answering the question. Please ask me a question. Okay. Don't get onto answering. Remember, it's where you and I discuss this lesson plan. That's what my making hours are about. It's not just me giving you ideas. It's about you and I driving this lesson plan together. I wonder if this tree is dead. Oh my goodness, a very beautiful question. It's just going to make them really think. Do you like trees without leaves? Okay, lovely. Nice. Again, making them think. Okay. Right, what else? You know, I wonder questions beautifully work in your classroom. Remember, them, remember that statement. If you are here as a principal or like a uh, like a coordinator, does the tree look happy? Okay, I wonder if this tree looks happy. Okay, I wonder why this tree has no leaves. Oh, why is this tree bald? Okay, great. I mean, again, depending upon what age group you're dealing with, because for them to kind of refer to baldness and connect that with tree, um, but it's great. Why not? Right. I wonder if this tree talks. Okay. Lovely. But you ask this question and they're going to really, really think as to how are trees going to talk? Okay. How are trees going to really talk? Okay, I'm just going to look around. Does this tree look happy? I wonder if this tree got enough water. Oh my goodness. Beautiful. Because that's really building up to uh, the next activities uh, that we really have that, that are following up on this. Okay. Different shapes of trees. Yes, I agree. Okay. Where have, I wonder where have all the leaves gone? Okay. Was there so much wind last night? Okay. I wonder if this tree will ever play with me. Okay, good. I wonder where the birds make the nest without leaves. Oh my goodness. Beautiful questions coming up. I'm, I'm happy that we're all thinking together. That's that's what I want to, I, I want this making art to be all about, right? Okay, we, I love this question as well. Which color leaves would you like to have on this tree? My goodness, good. Green leaves have gone. Come on, time for another makeover. What kind of leaves do you want to come back on this tree? Okay, will I wonder if this tree will give us any fruits? Okay, good. Why is this tree so thin? See, we've got like 50 questions already pouring up on this chat box. So great. I wonder how can I really make this tree healthy? Okay, great. Yeah. So, and then you can really take them to seasons and understand how trees are. Yes, uh, you know, when you have that season where all the leaves are going away, uh, the trees look like dead. They look like there's no nourishment, but it's just about waiting for the sun and the next season to come up and things will blossom up and all of that. What is the name of this tree? I love this question. Okay. Giving a name to these things, children love to add names, okay? Yeah, how should we take care and of course all of that. So, again, if you want to build a green school, you have to start creating that liking, that empathy towards, um, you know, the, the, the plants and the trees and the foliage and all of that around you. Otherwise, it's not coming in. They need to understand that 
uh, we need them more than we need them more than what they need us right that is what we need to make them understand even same is for water there's another thing called as blue uh, school which is like dealing with ocean literacy we're going to talk about this in the future future sessions again uh, there also the thing is that pani hai to hum hai hum hai isliye pani nahi hai remember that much right we are living because of trees and because of water that children have to understand so great things to get into their head with very very simple topics you don't know where it's really impacting them okay so okay good prashant sir so good lot of contribution coming in i'm always happy that my chat box is always tick, 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 just working around and that that's what really gets me excited as well okay so that was this activity again you can recreate um there's another book the 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 kindergarten book of the stem series also has a similar topic with again some more questions around the parts and all of that so uh, don't think that you cannot mix topics from different groups okay or different grades that's not what stem is all about you can really get in activities and ideas from different grades just lower it down or scale it down or scale it up okay so that's what you really have to do okay good uh, let's get on to the next activity okay because we also have too much to do and we i don't want to get stuck on one topic i want to give you as many ideas as possible okay lovely i love this one okay i like this one so this is how the really the sheet looks like okay it's called fun with numbers okay now i have a little um design here or i have a little scenery here um so the first thing that i want to know from you all is what can you see in this picture okay so let's just type in again i'm not going to let you sit idle so tick, 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 get on to your keyboards and start typing what can you really see here okay you have the picture in front of you um okay you can see a table and trees okay let's use a format okay i can see and then you type what you can see okay so let's let's just be a little more specific remember i want you to take this in your classroom a little bit of a little effort if you're on your phone i know it's going to be tough but if you're on a laptop or a tablet you might be able to type right so i can see numbers exactly there are numbers also don't worry don't forget i can see a windmill mango tree squirrel bench pond okay beautiful i can see a boy digging okay yeah okay uh, let's focus more on the picture on the left side okay yeah but children can see all of that so i'm not saying it's wrong okay and that's where i say that's not wrong okay sorry i should have been more specific it's the teacher's fault it's not the child's fault okay lovely so i can see a barn i can see a windmill great okay and while you see all of that how many birds can you count i can see a tree with mangoes numbers bench blah blah, blah 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 how many birds can you really count on this picture oh there's a squirrel sitting on the branch okay good again i might not ever get into the math of when they count because how much some can see less some can see more important is that they do this counting thing i'm not really getting into what is the right answer wrong answer i want them to explore i want a lot of eye movement to happen on this sheet that is what my agenda one of my agenda is 20 birds i wonder where are these 20 birds okay and when somebody talks about 20 birds everybody is going to go back and look onto the sheet my goodness where did those 20 birds come from good or you can see number 6 missing that's great observation that's lovely okay what uh, what fruits are growing on this tree okay trying to ask questions okay great mango 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 mangoes okay good so how are we going to really play this game okay or what are we really going to do with this game okay so i'm just going to explain that now again uh, ideally each learner needs to really get one sheet okay i would recommend that when you use this 
you must print it and you must laminate it so that it can be used from one class to another. Okay, so that's how a best way to save your resources are, right? Okay, so let's print it. Now, Let I'm going to give two dice to the learners. Okay, so I'm going to give them two dice. And then what am I going to do is I am going to roll the dice. The number that comes on my dice, okay, I'm going to really count. Okay, so either the teacher has one dice or one table uh, or one cubicle, not, I wouldn't say cubicle, but a one, one, one group of children have set of dice and they kind of chance by chance roll the dice and whatever number comes, okay, so if the number is nine, if I can see that on my sheet, right, six plus three, nine, is where I'm going to color it or I'm going to mark it or I'm going to highlight that number, right? So that is the activity, very, very simple. Again, I'm going to roll the dice and I'm going to see four plus one, five. Now, depending upon what age group these children are, how much counting they know, how much they can do, you know, after you've done your little bit of a math uh, session of counting is where you can kind of introduce this activity. So that's number five, okay? Yes. During this activity, students will learn to add numbers. Absolutely, I agree to that point. And that is where uh, really we want them to use this activity. So you color it or you mark it or you cross it, whatever it is. Now, there's another spin to this. If you are like a very enthusiastic teacher who loves to design a lot of material, right? You can have random numbers that are placed on different students' uh, sheets. So that becomes like a bingo or that becomes like a housey, right? So the first child who gets five numbers crossed, Jaldi five, okay, is the one who can really show up the sheet. Now, nobody's winning or losing anything. It's just about you, how quickly you've done your addition, how quickly you've done your math, and you've kind of got that, um, um, you know, those numbers crossed. So whichever child gets five numbers crossed can really show up the sheet. So uh, that's what is really, really happening. Um Again, you can also do a lot of before number and after number on the same sheet. You can also do odd numbers and even numbers on the same sheet. Yes, you can, after looking at these numbers, you can put them in ascending and descending order. Again, you can find the missing numbers so much that you can really do with a simple activity that's around you. Again, move it from classroom to classroom. So, uh, odd numbers, even numbers, missing numbers, before numbers, after numbers, ascending, descending numbers. All of that is really, yes, after, before, between, I did did mention about it. So um, that's, that's where this nice, fun activity comes. But remember, it was not just math. We started with language where we wanted them to speak. We moved from language to numbers. From numbers, we moved to a game. That is how, uh, I mean, that is how like an interdisciplinary activity really works. You just don't do math, math, math at the same time, or you don't do science, science, science at one time, or in English, you kind of combine things. And it's really easy, at least for the primary or until grade four, grade five, to kind of really get a lot of interdisciplinary activities happening in your class. Okay. So um, where are we? Uh, anybody, any more questions or any more thoughts on this activity? Uh, happy to hear. Otherwise, we move on to the next thing that we really will do. Our teachers can also teach them different shades of colors. Yes, absolutely. Again, I mean, if you're a school, a real progressive school is really going to worry about how one teaching aid can really be uh, kind of used in all different dimensions. Okay, so when I say dim dimensions, different subjects, right? So students can also create a story or we can tell them a situation Absolutely. That's why I started with language. I got them happy about this. I got them to know about this whole scene or a scenery or a situation and then move to numbers and then the game uh, and all of that, right? Yes, greater than, less than, absolutely. All of that is definitely there. Okay, great. So what are we really going to do is now, Prashant Sai, we can move on to the next activity. Uh, but again, if you all have questions, thoughts, keep putting that in the chat box. I am uh, really, really looking at it, okay? Okay, the next one. Yeah. Okay, nice little video where a little child is watering the plants. Um, it just gives, it, it kind of sets a background for children as to what are we really going to do next, okay? 
So if you can just go on to the next slide. Okay, so the plants are thirsty and now we have to make something. Okay, so again for that, I would, I mean, if you've got a paper cup with you, I mean, definitely it was a part of the material that we had to bring in uh, and some straws. So if you have it with you, uh, please kind of keep it ready. It won't take literally more than five minutes to actually, uh, you know, kind of design this little activity. Okay, so don't think that you really need more than five minutes. Of course, I'm talking uh, from the perspective of an adult kind of doing this little activity. Okay, so let's read through this. Again, you've got four uh, processes that we have in a STEAM lesson. Uh, and this is like a set process that you'll find in all the SAR education uh, STEAM or STEM series as well. I mean, so this is really the format that you will see across all those books as well. Okay, so, okay, what are we really going to do? We are going to design and construct a device that will water four plants at one time. Okay, so in one time, I'm going to put, I'm going to make sure that four plants get watered because we've got lots and lots of plants and all of them are thirsty and we don't have time. So we really want to be very, very quick at giving them water. Okay, so what is the challenge? The device or the machine that you make will water all the four plants at the same time, right? So that's the challenge. You make a watering machine, which you can also see in front of you, there's a watering can but you can just water one plant at a time, right? One girl is using one can to water one plant and then you've got the other girl using another can. But I want to make a device that uses one device to water four plants, okay? Now, what material do we have? We've got straws, we've got paper cups, we've got water, we've got glue and tape, okay? So water is something that we'll use later once our machine is ready, okay? Now, this is something how I talk with my children, okay? So don't think... Um, uh, that, you know, this is really for you all. But this is really to give you sometimes cues on how we really talk with children. So what's the process? First, I'm going to start with some questions for my learners, okay? What, I mean, what do really plants need, okay? What is really the food of the plants, okay? And then you will see answers coming in in your classroom and discussion happening for five minutes and all of that, right? What will happen if the plants don't get water, okay? The next question. What will happen if the plants get too much water as well, right? That's not also fun. I mean, it's like same for humans, right? You can't keep feeding yourself. When do you think you have to stop eating food, right? So there's a limit for, like there's a limit for us to eat food. There's also a limit for the plants to get sunlight, water and nutrients and all of that, right? So children will answer, uh, you know, and we want to ask these questions so that they really get into that uh, thinking mode, okay? Okay, good. Now that we've answered these questions, let's plan, okay? Now, look at all the material that you have on your, uh, all, look at all the material that you have on your table, okay? So we've got paper cups, we've got straw, we've got some tape, or we've got some glue and all of that, right? Okay, good. Now, I want you to, on a piece of paper, or, you know, I mean, if you have the SAR books, you'll always see there's a, like a nice space for children to sketch their drawing, right? Where they can really, do it in the books as well. So sketch your design as to how you will really make this device. Okay. Let's, let's put four, um, let's just put four, pl uh, four plants. Okay. So I'm going to actually show them something like this. Okay. So I've got four cups here. These are my four plants. Okay. See that that's the bottom and I've actually taped it up. Okay. So it's easy for them to understand what to do. I've taped up my four plants. Assuming that there are plants coming out of this, but it's easy for them to understand, right? Yeah, thanks, Prashansa. So that's that's what exactly has been done. Four plants have been put together. And now I have to make a machine that's very really going to water all the four of them at the same time. Okay, so is anybody uh, having paper cups or straw or something and you really want to build? I can give you a minute. Otherwise, I'm going to really show you the solution very easy, uh, but if you have something, uh, I don't want you to think about this. Don't don't build this. But if you have, assume that this is already with you in the classroom, and you have to use one paper cup and make a machine that will water all the four plants. Remember, if I do this, it can only go to one plant. If I do this, it only goes to one plant. 
what can i do that it can water all the four plants at the same time so the ones who are not doing this you can always use the chat box to type in and in that much time i am going to drink water because i am really parching okay so please put in your solutions okay and also time for you to drink water it's already warm and summer and already okay okay i'm i'm getting okay pin holes at the bottom okay if i make four holes here probably most of it will just drain down here i want to make sure it needs to go to all the four they're pretty much on the side remember i also have straws with me chalo make four holes take a water cup and make four holes okay where do i make the holes lovely give me all the ideas on chat that's also a good way to do this place one glass in between the four glass and pin holes on four sides of each glass and put the straw in each hole okay looks like a solution looks like a solution okay so somebody is saying i think kuldeep kaur is saying that let's put this cup here i'm going to just lower my this a bit okay so let's put let's put the cup here she's saying that let's make four holes here okay i'm going to make so i'll just take my okay one two three yeah east west north south is where i've put all my four holes okay and that's where i remind my children what do you think is a full form of news n e w s is also north east west south okay remember you have to mix topics from here and there we spoke about a little we spoke about a little uh paper cup and we went on to news as well that's how we really have to move okay at the bottom or sides okay so I've, that's what i've done i've actually literally punched holes on all the four sides now you're telling me to okay so let's just cut some straws okay woo my straw went down okay one two okay, three and four okay so um as per the suggestion i am just going and following that suggestion okay so here i have 1 2 and 4 and i think it looks like a good solution here if you really look at this um and i'll just show you look at this yeah a very very easy way I actually have put this here. Look at this top view that you can see all my four plants. <clears throat> sorry, all my four plants will get watered with that little mechanism that I have. Again, it's not going to be as fast as what I did it now. Uh, children will take time. Children will think. Uh, children will kind of uh, experiment and come up with solutions. But that's exactly how it looks like at the bottom. If you want to see. and a fun activity and then you put water and um, to see where the water is going <clears throat> that's what children are really going to enjoy uh, by when you really really put the real water into all of this right so that's exactly what the activity is again if somebody has another solution please type that because there could be multiple solutions to a problem like this right so um, I, i would really really want to hear from you all if you have another another uh, thing to talk about this right but if you were able to do this um um you know you can just if you want me to wait i can always wait for you but that is exactly what we really did i always have i, I mean i could have one minute and again to just show you how this looks like that's exactly how uh, this activity is going to be okay great um Okay, let's get on to the presentation and see if we've got something more. Otherwise, we keep the floor open for questions and see what all can really be done. Okay, here I've kind of listed, um, you know, um, some picture books. Considering that I'm dealing with junior kg, senior kg, where a lot of picture books are, you know, kind of necessary, important because. you want really the talking to happen when they see things so these are good picture books of course you can take a screenshot of this uh, and then you can quickly look around if you have it available locally or on amazon or whatever it is but 
this is something that I found online. So not all of it would be available in India, but um, there's a lot around trees and forests that you can really look around. Again, the Chipko Moment book, all that activity is beautiful. The thought, that thing is very, very nice. Uh, I, I should have remembered that earlier when I was designing all of this, but that's okay as long as I remembered it. So uh, not bad at all. Lovely. Let's see what we've got on the next slide. Okay. That's a thank you for me. Some ways that you can really reach out to me, connect with me. Um, again, I'm going to be here uh, every month coming up with a different topic. Uh, something that you can very, very easily, readily implement in your classroom, uh, in your school, uh, you know, kind of modify it. That's why those, uh, you know, sheets are also readily given to you so that you can print and use it in your classroom. Of course, the SAR education books have a lot more in them. So you must uh, look at those books, uh, reach out to SAR education team. Of course, Prashant Sa, you want to just put in the email address and all of that. Of course, because they've registered, they can always uh, get all those updates. So that's definitely happening. And um, I am ready to take in questions or your inputs and thoughts and reflections, whatever that comes to your mind after this session. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you have something to take back with you. Um, yeah. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed. So we can invite people on the screen also if you want to ask questions. So uh, please raise your hand like this or you can send in a reaction like this and we'll call you to the screen. Yeah, but remember 21st of March is the World Forest Day. You have few activities already with you. You just have to print and use it. So, and if you do that, please take pictures. Uh, please tag, uh, you know, me, Play Dad India or SAR Education. When you put it up online, we'll be really happy to know uh, how this session was helpful uh, for you to plan something that you could do in your classroom, right? So, uh, thank you again for attending this session. The next one is going to be interesting. I've already thought about it. I already gave you clues of what is going to happen in my next session. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for all the kind words that you're showering in the chat box for me and the session. So I'll have questions. If you want to really talk, you can really raise your hand and Prashansa can give you the rights to talk or, you know, whatever yeah. that you have to do. We're open for questions. So please raise your hand and uh, we'll invite you. Or you can send your questions in the chat. Box. I think there was a question on if we can see the book. How does it look like? I'm just going to show you. That's what the book is about. Um, so that's that's how the book looks like. This one, uh, the Lion is the Grade 1 book. Sorry, where's Lion? Yeah. Lion is the Grade 1 book. And this one is the Kindergarten book. Of course, useful for Junior KG, Senior KG. Scale up the activities, scale it down. Um, and ideally, one student uses one book. So that's how it really, really works. So if you like the activity that Murnal did with us and if you're interested in seeing what our STEM books looks like, so you can reach out to us on this number or on this email ID. You can take a screenshot of it if you like. Okay. Remember that's you. not my number, okay? So it's going to reach out to Sar Education. <laughs> So any other questions, anything you want to ask, uh, we're open for questions. You would love to answer some of them. But please do use these in your um, classroom, okay? So that's most important, um, you know, and the session is going to get uploaded on YouTube very shortly. So if you thought that your teachers would have enjoyed please just give them the link and they can really uh, look at the activities because you already have the printouts with you right so uh please ensure that they have the access to the recording as well so because not always everybody can attend the session that's why it's it's pretty much going um 
on so YouTube. So we have the session on YouTube live and you can access it easily. So I've shared the number again for Priyanka, ma'am. And to answer Ms. Ajaswi's query, yes, the school can get sample books, but for that, you'll have to reach out to us. And this is the number and the email ID for that. Okay, hope you've taken the screenshot. I'll just stop sharing. Great. Anyways, of course, the questions can... Uh... Yeah, this kind of activities helps to correlate two or more subjects. Yes, always you can correlate activities. You know, uh, it's just that little mindset or that little, uh, you know, that, that kind of idea needs to be given to teachers about how really you can combine and correlate. Um, and that is exactly what the sessions will always be about. How do we mix topics together? So exactly. Yes, please, please do that. Very important for children. Like Absolutely. just now, we in this activity, we discussed maths, EVS is already there, and we discussed arts also. We discussed English also. So, so much of integration has happened. Totally. And when all of that comes, you know, there's a lot of still a lot of collaboration happening with children. A lot of communication is happening. Remember, STEM activities... Uh, are useful to build some skills. Those skills are something that are going to be useful in the jobs that are expected in the coming years, right? So that's what we really have to look at, building up on those skills of children through multiple activities. That's that's really the agenda. Okay, great. So I think no more questions, Prashansa. So I think I'm not yeah. sure if the form was given to them to uh, fill out. Sorry, so I've got a question. Um, so th uh, the person is asking, these books are only to connect with our current books, which we are using. So what do you recommend? Do you recommend them as a supplementary book or do you recommend this as a STEM, as a standalone subject? So what would be your take on it, Pranad? Um, so there are two ways to look at it. I mean, if you are not integrating anything at the moment in terms of STEM or hands-on activity, yes, the book is right a, like a ready reckoner for you to get started. Uh, but if you are already, you know, using or if your school or your teachers are already in that mindset of making things hands-on, uh, then also these books are going to help you because you need more ideas and you have to you you don't have time and uh, you know, bandwidth to really sit and think. But remember, these books are for individual children uh, because it's like a like a like a workbook kind of a thing, right? Where they have to sketch, where they've got to do match the following, they've got to do coloring and all those little activities. So um, then it just becomes easy for you to evaluate, also, right? Sometimes evaluation is one important criteria when you do STEM, right? It shouldn't become a craft activity, but how are you evaluating? That's what the question of parents or your senior leaders are going to be that what are we gauging? What are we evaluating out of it? So that's where sometimes you just don't leave it at doing the activity, but you have a book. It records what you've really done. So, um, you know, also our Indian parents mindset is a bit different, right? Kya kia book school mein thoda dikhao. They, they want to see those tick marks and yeah. uh, those things. So it's not that we don't want to do it or we, we I, I would be against it, but when you can really help children at the same time, tell parents what they're really doing. I think it's a good balance between that. So, yeah. yeah. So that's why you have some books. But again, you don't have to do it like a chapter. I would not recommend to do it like a session. You can always open up the book in multiple sessions and do it from different sections as well. So, thought about tweaking and understanding from teachers and the academic coordinators and the curriculum designers will have to be done. But once they get a hang of it, once they know that you have to be flexible, you will love that. You will never go back to your old school of just following the curriculum. I'm telling you this really happens. So uh, just, just a little bit of a push from the senior leaders have to happen. Yeah, but thank you for this question. I think it's going to help others as well. So uh, I love questions and it helps others. 
So I think that was a brilliant session, uh, Munal. Uh, I I mean the uh, poem or the story that we saw it was quite interesting and really uh, planned everything nicely. And uh, I mean this kind of interaction to get from an online audience. They, they, I mean the chat was overflowing. Only you can do that. So thank you so much. And I'm already looking forward to your next session again. Thank you very much. And see you all everybody soon and enjoy the upcoming days and have a great evening today. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye. So Bye. I'll request the audience to please check the chat box or the feedback form link. You can just click it and uh, fill it and then you're free to go. Additionally, I would also like to announce our webinar for tomorrow. We are having a, a storytelling session on fostering SCLN education. I'll just quickly share details about it. So it's tomorrow from 4 to 6 p.m. It's not 4.30 to 6. Remember, it's 4 to 6 p.m. And our beloved Simi Shivasta ma'am is going to do it. So we're looking forward to your participation tomorrow as well. I'll once again request the audience to please check the chat box for the feedback form link. You can just fill it and then you're free to go. I'm also sharing the webinar invite for tomorrow. So if you want to register, you can click on this link. I'll once again request the audience to please check the chat box. You can fill the survey link and then you're free to go. Also, additionally, please register for our webinar that's there tomorrow. Once again, I'll request the audience to please check the chat box for the feedback form link. Please fill it and then you're free to leave. Thank you so much for your participation. We look forward to having you tomorrow as well. Thank you, everyone. Have a lovely evening.